Welcome to Knife Thoughts. This video is going to be on this knife, and as you can see, this is a Beaver Falls Cutlery Company branded knife from Cooper Cutlery. And Cooper Cutlery is using this brand as one of the trademarks or brands that they received in the process of purchasing both machinery and trademarks from Queen. But Beaver Falls Cutlery Company goes way back, way before Queen, and uh, I want to show you the knife here, and as I show you the knife, talk a little bit about the history of Beaver Falls Cutlery Company. If you're interested in this type of thing, make sure you are following along, subscribe to my blog, my website, knifethoughts.com. You can subscribe via email. And you'll get emails when I post new articles and things like that. Uh, I don't spam you, but you that's how you get the articles on these knives and related topics, which is really, I think, where you can get a better look at the history of these you know, vintage patterns. So make sure you do subscribe there. But this knife, like I say, is made by Cooper Cutlery, which is a relatively new cutlery outfit in Ohio. They are using a lot of the old trademarks as well as the old machinery from Queen. And I believe some trademarks that they have uh, acquired otherwise, not necessarily directly from the Queen liquidation. But Beaver Falls Cutlery Company is one of those. And this is a knife that I was excited to get because I have always wanted to get a Beaver Falls Cutlery Company knife. Now, the reason for that is because Beaver Falls is relatively near Pittsburgh, where I work and went to school and have lived. And also because Beaver Falls Cutlery Company is one of the oldest American cutlery companies. So it was founded in the 1860s, and that is well before a lot of the other really well-known names like Case and Queen and things like that. And it was brought to Beaver Falls, you know, like every cutlery company in that time, there were lots of changes with the names and the owners and things like that. But it's got an interesting history because one of the things that it's known for is a labor dispute. So in the 1870s, it was doing well, it was profitable, and the workers who uh, were skilled cutlers from Sheffield really all of the workers or almost all of the workers in these very early cutlery companies were from mostly Sheffield because just of the uh, politics of the time, but also some did come from Germany. And so uh, that is the case for uh, companies like Queen and, and really Shatton Morgan first and, uh, and the various case companies. They all really were started with labor from England, Sheffield, where the pocket knife industry and, and cutlery industry in general had been thriving for a while. Uh, so these English workers from Sheffield decided to initiate a labor dispute, and the owner of the company decided not to capitulate, basically, and uh, instead brought in 225 Chinese workers, so Chinese American workers uh, who had immigrated to the U.S., mostly from the West Coast. So they actually came all the way from the West Coast to uh, Beaver Falls, some also from New Orleans. So you can imagine it, it was kind of a large undertaking to not <laughs> give in to the labor dispute demands uh, to, to bring people in from you know, the far corners of the country, basically. Uh, but the reason they did is at least stated uh, that they believed that they, you know, were hard workers. There was actually a, a Methodist minister who was familiar somehow with, with the uh, um, Chinese population in those areas and believed them to be hard workers and uh, they liked that they didn't drink as a minister. So that's why it was kind of came about that the owner of Beaver Falls Cutlery Company went that route. And of course, the Sheffield workers didn't like that. Uh, but it's just an interesting piece of uh, cutlery history and uh, a relatively early you know, example of a labor dispute in, uh, in industry and especially in the cutlery industry. So kind of an interesting uh, little background on this trademark. Now, like I say, uh, I do plan to do an article on the, basically the brands that, that Cooper Cutlery is using because a lot of them are old brands and people aren't necessarily as familiar with them. But 
that, the history behind this brand is what made me excited that they were using these knives and I was going to be able to buy one because they are not easy to find uh, vintage Beaver Falls Cutlery Company knives. They, you know, do come up. They do come up every now and then on eBay. Uh, but I don't, you know, follow eBay as closely as, as a lot of people do and uh, definitely have not seen one come up that I was able to get. So I was excited to be able to buy one as a new production. Is it the same thing? No, but I appreciate, you know, being able to have a knife made in the USA with this brand. So I got this from Traditional Pocket Knives. Uh, you can use the link in the description, which is an affiliate link, helps me out, um, doesn't you know cost you any more or anything. Austin at Traditional Pocket Knives, C. Reisner Cutlery, does a great job and I, and I think is one of the biggest proponents of Cooper Cutlery. Even at the beginning when they were having some real issues with the knives, uh, he was a supporter and carried their knives. So I appreciate that and him being basically a patron of, you know, making sure that there are other USA uh, pocket knife makers other than basically GEC and uh, Case. Of course, there's Baron Son and things like that. But uh, I, I do appreciate that, and I got this from Austin. Now, another thing that I found interesting about this knife is that they did mammoth shields on these. So hopefully you'll be able to see this relatively well here. But this shield, which is, I believe, sometimes called a federal shield, I am very bad with my shield names. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I'll put an addendum in the description. But this shield, whatever this is, is mammoth. So it's mammoth ivory. Uh, so that's really cool because it's something that's kind of unique. It really sets it off from these handles. There were a couple different handles that they offered. This one is ebony, so you can see that. Uh, and then I believe that that would ebony jack and mammoth shield. I'm not 100% sure to be completely honest, but uh, really sets sets it apart from that really nice dark ebony and i really like that mine is fit really well someone in the barlow bearcat club did have one that was kind of cracked and not fitting well uh, but it is not pinned obviously because it's a, a synthetic um, it's a it's not a metal shield so it can't be pinned so it's just glued in but it's one of those things where hopefully they're using a good glue honestly this is not planned to be a user knife for me uh, it's more of a collection knife so Hopefully it won't cause any issues, but I do really like that. I was excited to see that. And uh, there are some other things about this knife that, that really caught my attention once I got it. So first of all here, this knife is stamped 2023. Uh, I got this in like mid 2024. So uh, they must have made these blades earlier. They are putting out some more Beaver Cutlery, uh, Beaver Falls Cutlery Company uh, knives here in even more mid uh, 2024. Another really cool thing, and, and I hope you're going to be able to see this, but if you look in right here on the liners, it says, may God, what does it exactly say? It's kind of hard to see. May God bless you, CMC. So I believe CMC in that case stands for Cooper Manufacturing Company, something along those lines, but it's a nice little touch. Uh, I do like that, you know, I'm sure there are people who won't like that, but uh, I think it fits in with the traditional aesthetic. Um, I appreciate it personally, and I think it's just kind of a cool touch that they put on. Now, another thing about these knives that kind of differentiates them from Great Eastern Cutlery knives is that the pins are all flush. So I'll show you an example of a Great Eastern Cutlery knife where the pins are not flush, at least one of them, I guess. So this is my old TC Barlow and there's a domed pin. It's actually not a very deep recessed pin. I probably have better examples of that. Here, this one has some. So this is a Possum Skinner, right? Yeah, Possum Skinner. Uh, and this has a bunch of those domed pins. So, you know, it's uh, a different look. I do think that I prefer the look of these nice flush pins. Now, one of these, interestingly, this one, 
I don't know if it didn't get hammered or didn't get hammered as much as the others, but you can see it looks different. It's less wide. So just kind of an interesting thing. I'm sure it wouldn't be an issue because there's two other pins to hold these scales in and then the, the spring pin. But anyway, just a little different there. Now, one thing, this has a really nice fit between the covers and the bolsters, which is something I've seen GEC knives relatively frequently recently have gaps there. So that's really nice. There's also no gaps between the covers and the liners, but there are some gaps between the liners and the spring. So they're not massive, but they're definitely noticeable to me. Um, not a practical issue, but just something that for me, I can notice it and it's not 100% perfect. That type of gap, um, I have seen relatively commonly recently on GEC knives, but it's not super common. It's something that I would be relatively surprised to see on a GEC knife. But really what that all says to me is that they are doing a really good job coming from where they started, which, you know, you have to give credit to them because kind of getting these old machines from Queen, just starting out, it, it's a tough process. And, uh, you know, Bill has said that himself. It's a tough thing to get started, but it is something to have started. Um, my wife always says that quote from Treebeard in, in the Lord of the Rings books, it's something to have started. And, uh, and it kind of goes along with this, the man in the arena idea, which is a quote from Theodore Roosevelt that we have on the, the walls of all of the gyms that I work at. Uh, I think all of that's very true. They, they did it. They started, you know, making these knives and they're much, much better than they were at first. Now, again, not perfect. Um, you can see the pivot pins on both sides. Now, it's not like they're loose. It's, there's no blade play at all, but you can see those pivot pins. And then mine just came with a, a good little scratch there on the back of the blade. But they are really well made. You know, it, it's relatively squared off knife, which is, I, I think, a, an aesthetic choice. It, it fits in with this very old school um, aesthetic of the Beaver Falls Cutlery Company. Very squared, you know, on the butt and the sides here. But it, it's really, you know, a great action. I would say, like, nearly a perfect pull for this type of knife. It's right around a five but nice, nice action. You can see it drops closed really nicely. Beautiful sound to it. Also centered well, tips not proud. I got a good amount of the tip down into the blade well there. Uh, this long pull is really nicely done. Uh, I was really surprised by that. Long pulls can be difficult sometimes. I wonder if they're using like a mill for that, but really nicely done. The etch is nicely done, which on a, a previous but later knife by Cooper Cutlery. The etch was a kind of had a double shadow for me. And so it's nice to th see this one done well, especially because it is a relatively complex etch. Uh, so overall, I think it's just a really nicely made knife. Um, these ranged from about 150 to $200, I think on, you know, at dealers. And, you know, I think you're getting a really cool, you know, 100% American-made knife. It is in D2 if you care about that. And now this paper inside the box is going to say that it's 1095 if I can get this paper out. But I think that this is just like a stock paper. Um, it says we use 1095 carbon steel blades, but the blade says D2. And from what I've seen from people who have used these, it seems like it is probably D2 and not 1095. But um, here is your lifetime warranty. So you can read through that stuff, pause the video and read through that if you're interested. But, you know, good materials on it. It's got ebony and mammoth ivory and D2. I think it's a great package. Um, I really like it. I'm really glad that Cooper Cutlery is doing well with these. Uh, people seem super excited about them. A lot of my online knife time is spent recently in the Barlow Bearcat Club Discord, and there has been a lot of chatter about these on there. So uh, I'm really excited. I'm really happy for Cooper Cutlery's success. Uh, I'm really hoping they do a Barlow soon, by the way. Uh, I really would love to see a Barlow from them. They have been saying that they are going to at some point for a while, so I hope it's soon. Speaking of Barlow's, if you love Barlow's, make sure you check out knifethoughts.com slash Barlow Bearcat Club. Um, that's uh, a great club for enthusiasts of Barlow's and really traditional knives and knives in general. 
Um, but if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Leave any comments below. Again, make sure you subscribe uh, via email at knifethoughts.com. I'll have the link to do that in the description also. Uh, but subscribe to the channel, click the bell, and select all so you know when I post new videos. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.